2021-0216 Parish President's Remarks and Report. Mr. Jewell. Thank you, Chairwoman. Um, I just want to say a big uh, a big thank you again to Mr. Jimmy Bro. I know he um, he, he left, um, and uh, but it's just really hard to find people who are willing to dedicate that much time, um, basically their their whole life to um, to one issue. And uh, he was certainly passionate about it. We had, we actually had a little lunch for him at the courthouse last week, um, just with him and a couple of his family members and whatnot. So. Um, Again, we're, we're very thankful for his service to the Civil Service Board. Um, starting off with a COVID update, last week Governor Edwards issued an indoor mask mandate uh, for the state and all of its political subdivisions. Um, in line with the proclamation, I um, uh, in, in put an uh, executive order for the St. Charles Parish Courthouse and all government buildings um, for this mask mandate. This includes uh, all members of the public five years and older who are uh, both vaccinated and unvaccinated. Uh, the mandate's going to stay in place until at least September 1st. And as COVID numbers remain high throughout the parish, uh, we will continue to, continue to take a look on that, uh, to continue to monitor those numbers. Uh, this includes uh, the public and our employees inside of the buildings. Uh, additionally, in speaking of St. Charles Parish Hospital, the hospitalization rates are the highest that our parish has ever seen since the beginning of the pandemic. For the week of July 15, July 15th, St. Charles Parish had a 19.4% positivity rate. And the following week of July 22nd, the parish had a positivity rate of 21.7%. This weekend alone, the parish saw 200 and, 212 new cases of COVID-19. Overall, throughout this pandemic, we have seen 7,318 total cases and 97 deaths. There are 12 St. Charles Parish residents currently hospitalized. Um, and out of the 198 hospitalizations in Region 3, 20 people are on ventilators. 90% 90 of, 90 of the hospitalizations are people who have not been fully vaccinated. And for reference, St. Charles Parish has one ICU bed open at this time, four med surge beds, and two psychiatric beds. From July 22nd to, 20, to July 28th, 90% of all the COVID cases, 84% of the deaths, and 91% of hospitalizations are accounted for by people who are not fully vaccinated. I encourage all the residents to speak with their doctors and make a decision um, for themselves regarding the COVID-19 vaccination. Um, and there are several places throughout the parish where you can receive the vaccine. Uh, remember, the COVID-19 vaccine does not protect you from catching COVID, but it does reduce your chances of being hospitalized with a very severe case of COVID. With this, St. Charles Parish, and along with United Healthcare, wanted to op offer a vaccine opportunity um, to uh, the residents of St. Charles Parish and anybody, frankly, in the River Region uh, or Jefferson Parish. Uh, so, in coordination with United Healthcare, um, with actually United Healthcare Community Plan, uh, the St. Charles Parish Hospital, um, Oshner, our um, uh, Access Health, um, Sheriff Greg Champagne, DA Joel Chasson, uh, St. Charles Parish Public Schools, myself, we're going to be hosting that back to school bash tomorrow from 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. at the community center. This is an outdoor event. There's plenty of space for people to come listen to good music to spread out. And if they choose, they will have the opportunity to get a Pfizer vaccination uh, and listen to the, the Bucktown All-Stars. All the food is free. Snowballs are free. Um, we look forward to seeing everyone there. Along with the Back to School Bash, St. Charles Parish has 16 places, again, to get uh, vaccinated. You can go to www.vaccines.gov slash search and enter your zip code. That's going to give you the places nearest to you um, for, the, for the vaccinations. While searching, you can see uh, all those locations, um, and I believe you might even be able to see the testing sites. Is that on there yet? Okay, well, they do have testing sites um, that are, are, are going up, obviously, with the more, case, more cases that we're seeing. Uh, places like St. Charles Parish Hospital, uh, Access Health, and others are increasing their ability to test. In addition, um, if you've been exposed to COVID-19 or are showing symptoms, there are two locations, again, to get tested. That's Walgreens and Booty, St. Charles Urgent Care, um, and the hospital, River Road, uh, Oshner Urgent Care, and St. Charles Parish Urgent Care in Destrehan. Walk-ins are available. Um, that testing site at the hospital is Monday through Friday, 3 to 8 p.m. Uh, an appointment is required. If you're uh, interested in getting a test there, you have to call 
235-5445, and I believe it is a drive-through testing site. Uh, on to infrastructure updates. Um, I mentioned a couple of these at the last um, uh, council meeting, but I will mention some of them again just to give an update. Uh, we're continuing to do the, the, the road project improvement. Um, is that we're on first road program? Um, is underway. Numerous streets have been worked on throughout the parish during phase one, and we will have multiple phases for this program from barrier construction, so for barrier to construction uh, to touch all the areas of the parish that's necessary for road repair. You can see some photos on the screen of some of the work that's being done. Um, each week, crews notify the residents ahead of time where they're going to be working, uh, and we maintain an updated list of road closures uh, for all the stakeholders in the parish through the EOC. Uh, please know that work, that work can be added or subtracted to each day depending on the weather, uh, so please be patient with us as, as this process goes on. Again, I spoke about this last at the last meeting. There's kind of three phases to this. First is patching, where they come through and make patches to uh, the most severely damaged portions of the road. Uh, then there's milling, and then there's uh, overlay at the end, and then it'll, the, the road is complete. Um, next is the Sugar House Road uh, Canal. Uh, I know that this is at Paul Mallard. It's not Sugar House Road, uh, which some residents pointed out to us on Facebook, uh, but this is where the canal goes across uh, to the pump station at Paul Mallard. Uh, so you can just see a, a before and after there um, um, where, where they're actually widening the, the bottom of the canal. I think they're doing a 12-foot width of that canal all the way through. Uh, and again, we are going to be working on taking out some of the quote-unquote cowboy crossings where uh, some of our residents use that land to uh, graze, graze cows in the uh, buffer zone of Bayer. And we're going to be replacing some undersized culverts with some box culverts. All right, next is Wade Street in Luling. Been going through on Wade. Um, in replacing culverts. This was going on last week. Uh, I'm sure some of y'all saw the work going up and down there. Um, and then, again, we did some ditch uh, repair near 3160 in Hornville, uh, which was, uh, has relieved a lot of flooding off of, off of River Road, and we're currently working on Trailsway Drive uh, in the rear where the outfall culvert uh, enters the woods. Uh, we have a chipper back there getting us access to that, that ditch, which was very, very overgrown. All right. And then West Heather. Um, the West Heather Drive between Lakewood and St. John Street has finally been reopened after a three-week project to replace the hatches. So just an update to the, um, to the council that that intersection is reopened uh, and the, waste, the wastewater lift station project is complete. Uh, job openings, we have four. Um, carpenter, shop mechanic helper, equipment operator one, and equipment operator three to apply. You know the website, www.stcharlesparish.gov. That's our new website. Um, and again, you want to go to uh, click employment and you can apply through the new website. Animal control. Uh, last week, ASPCA uh, and our animal control did a, a, unique, um, a unique project uh, that we don't see very often. This was funded through Code 3 of Colorado State to facilitate, facilitate training for animal shelters and, and first responders across the, straight, across the state. The program included sheltering and disasters, hurricane evacuation, no-notice flooding, hoarding, um, sorry, hoarding and more, and the exercise, uh, the exercise were classroom and tabletop exercise based. They also went out to the field to do ropes and rescue program to simulate stuck animals um, and also participate in a hazmat training decontamination exercise to work on the integration between local parishes and their shelters during disaster. So you can see on the screen, um, we created a mud pit for them and a, I guess a fake dummy horse there that they were able to uh, rescue from that mud pit. And this will come in handy in events uh, when we have uh, animals such as horses or cows out in fields that may get stuck in mud and uh, we will be able to better train to uh, rescue those animals. Uh, sales tax update. Our June sales tax numbers are in, and they are 21.36% up from last, last June. To date, we're up 17.78% 17 in comparison to the first half of 2020. The parish is up approximately $3 million in sales tax from last year. And I think that's it for me. Any questions?